Shalom, it is February 13th and it is day 130 of the war between Israel and Hamas. We're here watching together Channel 11, the evening news. The anchor says that there is a dramatic meeting right now, a summit happening in Cairo with the officials of Israel together with the mediating countries um, in order to, to advance a new agreement to release the hostages. And also there is new um, documentation of Sinwal, the head of Hamas, um, walking in the tunnels. We'll be seeing that soon as the IDF spokeswoman will explain that. And a day after the rescue, the courageous rescue of the two hostages, uh, we will see some footage about that uh, minute after minute from the, from the cameras that were on the helmets of the soldiers. But before this, in battle, three soldiers and officers were, had fallen uh, in battle in the southern part of Gaza. Netanel Yaakov al Kobi, 36 years old from Haifa. Yair Cohen, 30 years old from Ramat Gan. And Ziv Khen, 27 years old from Kfar Sava. May the memory be blessed. We will start with a summit in Cairo. And we're getting more details about the new uh, outline of the agreement. The outline on the Israeli side was put together by the top intelligence officials of Israel, the head of the Shabak, the head of the Mossad, and another um, top official. But this uh, outline of an agreement was not approved by Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel. So really, these officials are going to Cairo without anything on the plate. They're going there to listen. They're going to uh, just hear what the mediators have to say because the Prime Minister did not agree to these officials' um, proposal for the agreement of a hostage exchange. Next, here's the footage of the courageous rescue, heroic rescue of the Shabak and the Yamam. These are um, commando forces of the IDF. So they rescued these two Israelis after 129 days. The IDF walked into an area in Rafiach, in Rafa city, where they have not yet operated in. It is full of terrorists, they're saying. We see here the fierce battling between the IDF soldiers and the terrorists that are holding the hostages. However, these are the hostages, those are Hamas, and the IDF soldiers uh, surprised the terrorists. So actually, within minutes, these terrorists were dead. Here are accolades and really encouragement of uh, the top of the uh, the police of Israel, speaking to my minister Netanyahu about what a wonderful force and commando uh, they have, um, that the soldiers just did an outstanding job. As they were close to taking the hostages out, uh, the commando forces continued killing terrorists in nearby buildings that were a threat. In just a short time, the nightmare of Fernando and Luis is almost is over, and here we see we see them in a safe and sound in an IDF vehicle and the conversation between the soldiers really risked their lives in order to save theirs and the soldiers are asking, are you cold? Luis and Fernando. And they're asking, Kham, Kham Balev, no, we're warm, warm in the heart. So this operation is a very high achievement uh, operationally and intelligence wise and the IDF will continue to search for intelligence in order to help release these hostages from Gaza. The next story is about the northern border of Israel, right next to Lebanon, Kiryat Shmona, the Israeli uh, large, relatively large town. Hezbollah has put Kiryat Shmona on its target, and it's, uh, in the last few days has been launching GPS-led missiles that are very accurate. And today Hezbollah shot directly to, um, to the police station. It did not hit the police station, but it actually severely injured a mother, a 40-year-old mother, and her 16-year-old son. Here we see the blood marks and a shoe. It happened a little bit after 11 in the morning today. They were both moved to Rambam Hospital in Haifa. Here, they, the doctor, Hani Bachus, by the way, he's Arab. He's, he's speaking Arab. We hear the accent. The name is Arab. We have many Arab doctors working in Israel. They're, he's saying that their condition is, um, is severe, but they're stable. There is no danger for their lives. Uh, he's, explain exactly how they took care of them and what are they still doing to them. This is the mayor of Kiryat Shmona, Avichai Stern, and he's saying really, he's talking to his people, don't go out. If you need to do some grocery shopping, do it quickly and go back to your place. And just to remind you, most of Kiryat Shmona's people are evacuated. Most, most of them are not even living in their homes. Here we see another barrage of um, 
of rockets from Hezbollah to Israel. And Nasrallah, the head of Hezbollah, is saying we will not stop firing Israel until the war in Gaza finishes, until there's ceasefire uh, in Gaza. So he's linking the northern destiny with the southern one. The next video is very, is just amazing, seeing Fernando and Luis that were released from captivity with their families, they're still in the hospital. This is Luis Harden, it says, there's no words, ain't milim, to, to describe the joy uh, when we were released. Fernando Merman is saying, when I saw you, he's speaking about the soldiers, I felt very safe. And they're speaking in a choked voice, just very emotional. And slowly the family is hearing more and more details about their four months in captivity by Hamas. She's thanking the soldiers, the IDF, the forces, the commando forces, uh, to whoever had anything to do with this uh, rescue. And you hear in the background Luis's daughter saying that she saw soldiers' boots. Here she is. Uh, next to his bed at the hospital and she's saying why are these soldiers boots here and he says yeah the soldier gave them to me and also a jacket so they were very very touched so it's continuing to pray to set the captives free there's still 134 hostages in Gaza, Gaza out of which 108 are still alive next is the IDF spokesperson right now Daniel Hagari is about to, to speak starts with Erev Tov good evening in the last months Israel's security forces and the IDF have been working intensely in throughout uh, Gaza, especially Khan Yunus in the south. Here it is. He's saying it's built out of very dense population. Some of it is farming area, but really there is a, it's a vast area uh, and dense. In the beginning of this month, we have arrested the relatives, uh, fir the first circle relatives of top officials of Hamas out of the concern that they are involved in terror. These guys are arrested, are taken into Israel, into the Israel Internal Security Forces, and being in, they're interrogated, and these uh, arrested terrorists are giving a lot of information. Underneath Khan Yunis, he's saying there is a very broad, complex, um, long system and infrastructure of tunnels. He's saying the IDF is working on the top and on the bottom, above ground and underground. The maze, the underground maze under Khan Yunis is made out of different kinds of tunnel, tunnels and different kinds of uh, infrastructure. There are some tunnels that their purpose is just to create a, a uh, safe spot, like a, um, a hiding place. And other, other tunnels are made just as a bridge to, towards others. And others serve more as headquarters where they uh, plan the war, they control the war from there. Some of it is um, to hold soldiers or hostages, seniors. They plan, uh, here's the ammunition they hold under the ground. We are focused on finding all of these. We found most of them, but, and we're determined to find the rest of these tunnels. These tunnels have bedrooms, and here he's speaking about a certain um, a certain tunnel that's under the graveyard in Hanus, under a cemetery, uh, with bedrooms there and very convenient for those seniors who are staying there. Here it seems like he is one of Sinwal's brothers. They're entering into a safe place that was created for them ahead of time. Here are the children, Sinwal's children. And this is Sinwal himself. Here he is. This is all uh, on October 10th while the war is happening right above them. We will not stop the hunt over Sinuar until we find him, dead or alive, he says. He says the seniors are having a very convenient time underneath. Uh, they sleep next to safes with millions of shekels in them. Uh, they have bathrooms and everything is set for them. We're continuing to catch terrorists, to interrogate them, and to find more and more intelligence. And the most important is to find is information about the hostages in order to make decisions and prepare operations like the one we just did with the releasing Fernando and Luis yesterday. For more updates and videos, visit us on allisrael.com and really share these stories with your friends, share all Israel with your friends and families to get more of these stories out there. This is Rotem again for All Israel News.